Hello and welcome to this tutorial on the topic of the Device Explorer. If you're taking the Glueware test drive, you will be able to follow along with all the steps I'm showing in this session. Device Explorer is used in most of the Glueware applications, including Device Manager, Config Drift and Audit, as well as OS Manager. So it's a, a key fundamental component to use within the Glueware platform. In this tutorial, we're going to look at using Device Explorer, including column selection, sorting, grouping, searching, filtering, and our new config search option announced or released with Glueware 4.0. So let's jump in. I'm going to sign into the Glueware instance here. And Glueware is going to take me back into the last place I was when I either timed out or signed out of the system, which happens to be Device Manager. So for most of this tutorial, we are going to use the Device Manager view. To get to Device Manager, click on the top right navigation option here in the App Switcher and select Device Manager. And then make sure you're in the right organization that you want to be working with. If you're doing the test drive, you'll be signed into one of these organi organizations. And just so you can follow with pretty much uh, straightforward, if you are doing the test drive, I am executing it on the same system that you would be running it on. So it should look pretty consistent. So moving on here, um, once you've gone through the step shown in a previous video where you've added devices into your system, or again in the test drive, they will already be added in there for you, you, have, you then perform discovery. So when you do a discovery, you select one or more devices. You can hit Control A for all your devices, and you click this button to execute a discovery. And so I'm going to go ahead and execute a new discovery and just show you that this information will, will um, all get updated in real time. The engine, engine is going to go out in parallel and query all those devices and update the information captured that uh, populates this grid. So as that discovery completes, you'll see that execution here and all of the stats and other things that we're collecting are updated. The, the, you know, the only really kind of real time stat we're capturing is pulling the uptime statistic. So we can see if, you know, if, if any of these uptime stats was a very low number, I, it could be a possible indicator to me that the device may have been reloaded or rebooted at some point. So moving on here, now I'm here within the Device Explorer. And what I uh, said in the intro I want to highlight to you is that Device Explorer here is the primary way to navigate your, your devices in Device Manager. But as you navigate to other apps, like I'll, I'll navigate over to Config Drift and Audit, you're going to see a Device Explorer here as well, and same in OS Manager. The, the main difference is that the, the Device Explorer will have a slightly different personality where there will be certain things exposed in the different apps. Like, for example, when you're in Drift and Audit, you will have information specific to Drift and Audit statistics. The other thing to point out at is the action and view tabs that you have available, the actions that you can take are going to be specific. So some things are common you can do within Device Explorer at, in, in Device Manager and in Audit and in OS Manager. Other things are unique to that app. For example, if I'm going to take a, a snapshot of the configuration for Drift, that is only available in Drift. So just be aware that the Device Explorer is you know, context sensitive in terms of what app you're navigated into. So for the purposes of this demo, we're going to navigate back to Device Manager and we're going to run through the basics or the fundamentals of navigating or using the Device Explorer. So one of the first and maybe one of the more important items is this uh, configuration cog on the top left of the grid. You click on that and that's where you can turn on or off the columns that you want to see in your grid. So for example, if I'm using a description, I want that included. If I'm not using a description, I will remove it. One thing that sometimes confuses people a little bit is there's a notion of a host name as well as a name. One thing uh, Glueware requires when you import your devices is that you, you name them. So th this is coming from a, a file or you know some me mechanism of you know you being able to name the device the host name is read from the device. Generally, these things are the same thing, but you can see an example here where this physical switch stack, this 3650, 
the name given to it in a spreadsheet does not uh, match exactly with the host name on it. So generally in most production environments, th these two will be aligned. And if they are the same thing, you may, may want to hide one of the columns. Like I may want to come in here and, hit, and hide the name column because it's kind of redundant if I already have the host name column in view. So that, that's one thing that's pretty critical. Uh, the, other, the other piece I'll point out is if in, we have uh, another video coming up on the topic of integrating the Cisco API, but certain things in fields, like including syslog integration, the, the configured by items, you, if you're doing the syslog integration, you need to turn these on. If you're doing the Cisco API integration, you want these items turned on. So a number of the grid elements are related to some other feature like the syslog or the Cisco API example. So be aware of that. So how do I organize and, and work with my data? You know, a lot of our customer deployments are, you know, hundreds, thousands, tens of thousands of devices. So in this example, we're working with a pretty small test, you know, lab built for test drive users and it just has 10 devices. So you can look at all of these and assess things pretty quickly, but normally you're going to be working with a much bigger set of devices. So let's take a look at the items I talked about in the intro, starting with, we just went through column selection. Let's go into sorting. So Gluer is always sorting on, on a column. It, it defaults to sorting on your leftmost column and you, you can sort by just clicking on the arrow key here. So if I want to see it, then this is alphabetical based on the data. So C as Cisco is put on top of J for Juniper. And if I want to sort by any other column, let's say I don't want, you know, routers and switches and firewalls intermixed here, I can sort based on the uh, device type. So this put firewalls at the top, then routers, and then switches at the bottom. So those are just, you know, column ordering. And depending on what you're doing or depending on what you're working on, maybe you're assessing or looking at your operating system versions. You may want to sort on that, you know, it just really depends on what you're trying to do. But that's the, the arrows. And anytime you turn on a sort on column, that is the, the column the grid is sorting on. So that's sorting. Next, we'll go into grouping. And so grouping, you have a, a filter or a drop down here called group by. And one of the most common ones I use as an example is grouping by the vendor. So if you group by vendor, it's going to put all the devices into the bucket of that vendor. So this one's a pretty simple example where I only have two vendors and it will give you a count. So I have nine Cisco devices and one Juniper device. And then if I just wanted to work within those Cisco devices, I could expand this subset and, and you know, kind of just work in here. And again, it, it's more impactful when you have more vendors and more devices. It's about finding ways to bring focus to what you're working on. And, and the items that you're trying to work on within Glueware, because once you've filtered it, you're going to be taking an additional action. Maybe you're going to do a search or uh, other things we're going to get into. So that is the, the sorting option, and it's pretty straightforward. Next, let's look at searching. When you want to search, you you click in you click into the search bar here, and this this dialog is. A little tricky in that it's serving multiple purposes. This is where the search is, but this is also where the filter is. So if I click on the funnel itself here, it's going to open up a search bar. And by default, it's just a straight text search. So you can type any string here, you know, CSR, and it's going to find, you know, it's going to do its best job of matching the underlying items with anything where it matches. So there's CSR. Uh, if I if I delete that out, it's going to reset. Now let's say I want to I want to search an operating system, so I can type you know 16.9, and it will filter the view to only show devices that have a field that matches that criteria. So that's a, a straight text search. It, you can get a little fancier, more robust if you tick the regex regular expression, and then you can go ahead and use regex syntax here and do more complicated types of searching and, and filtering or sorting. Maybe I want to look for a subfield within a host name or something. So that, again, just adding in regular expression. I'll turn that off. So that's searching, again, pretty pretty straightforward in that. Uh, I think the only thing, you know, 
maybe confusing or as a, as a beginner is just understanding this is kind of a dual purpose bar here with filter and search. So let's go into that last option of filtering. So with filtering, I'm going to click on the down arrow and then I have the ability to search or filter based on predefined criteria. So I could search based on vendor equals Cisco and add a rule and I can and or or operator. I could say and, you know, operating system or let's say operating system is iOS, iOS XE. So let's let's put pick that. And so I'm just building out a filtering mechanism here and I can hit apply and now it's applied where only iOS and iOS, iOS XE devices are filtered into my view. So if I if I click click on that again, I can bring the filter back up with that down arrow and um, again expand it or or reset it. I can I can change the operator to an or, but basically you know, you, you want to get to know, and I'll just delete this one out of here. You're going to want to get to know the things that you can search on. It's really any of the fields when you're trying to find a needle in the haystack or you're trying to work with a fairly large set of devices. These filtering criteria are going to be very, very helpful in terms of, you know, just getting to that information. The other piece that we're going to talk on and have a separate video on is the integration of the new Glueware dashboards. Glueware dashboards do a great job of taking filtered information and presenting it to you visually. So often when we get to this point, you may say, well, this is all good, but I really want to see a breakdown or a visualization. And I'll just give you a quick preview to navigate to my dashboards. And I'll navigate into a dashboard called my inventory. And this dashboard is doing filtering and sorting and counting as well as other widgets you see here right this is a total device count this is device by you know device type where it's breaking it down and counting here's a breakdown by operating system version so oftentimes you might be manipulating data within your you know your grid as you're as you're working with it but if it's things that you want to look at on a regular basis and understand again your breakdown of operating system versions or device types or whatever that data may be you would likely build it into a dashboard. So the dashboards are fully customizable. You can even take the preceded ones and clone them and make them your own. Let's get back to wrap up the session on Device Explorer. In just that, in Device Explorer, one of the last things I want to touch on is that in the latest release, Glueware 4.0, we introduced Config Search, which in this context is really maybe more accurately more accurate to be described as a config filter. So let me delete this out. And the way that's exposed is in your filter, you're going to choose either the latest snapshot or the default snapshot. Generally, you're going to want to work with the latest snapshot. The latest snapshot is the configuration that has been stored uh, per device the last time Glueware went out and discovered that device or performed discovery. We always capture the configuration running and then we can, you know, you have it as a backup as well as you can look back at that data or compare the data. So in this case, we're going to search the data and we're searching configuration information. So let's do an example of, let's just say I wanted to search all these devices for it to determine if they're configured with BGP. So let's just say I'm, I'm focused on the iOS, iOS XE devices. So I know the string I'm searching for in the config is router BGP. So I hit apply and I can see that just these four devices are configured for BGP. So again, that's what, what we're doing is filtering it down. Now with any one of these devices, you can double click on it. You can navigate into the, the, the config view here of the configuration and then you, 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 could, you could be able to identify the exact BGP configuration. So, and I can see here, you know, router BGP is configured. So the mechanism here is narrowing down the devices that meet that criteria. Let's do one more example. Let's do latest snapshot and, uh, and again, you, you may not 
it depends on the where things exist within your configuration. You may not want to use begins with. You might want to use contains. So let's just say I was troubleshooting something and I wanted to know any devices that had a default route configured. And the way I was going to try to search for that is just using 0.0.0.0. .0 .0 .0. And I hit, so I'm just saying contain. So anywhere in the configuration, if it, if it contains 0.0.0.0, .0, it's going to flag it for me. So I hit apply. So it, it, it highlights these four devices. So if I navigate into spoke two here and I, I run the configuration, I can, you know, I can take a look at the configuration and, and find out exactly where the, the four zeros are being used. And you know it's going to be likely in the in the routing, and it's likely going to be a default route. Again, I could I could search for more explicit mechanisms. I must have passed it. Here it is. So sure enough, you have an IP route 0 .0 .0 0.0.0.0. So you know I could I could refine my search even further and and copy this string and come back in here and click the down button and you know contains IP route 0, .0, .0, 0 0.0.0.0 hit apply and now you know again narrowing that haystack down now I only have two devices that actually have an IP uh, an IP route to for a static route so again just examples of working with it but in the next video uh, we're going to cover a more advanced method which is the ad hoc query Ad hoc query is going to give you a deeper view into searching configurations and searching operational state. So please, you know, proceed on and, and check out that next tutorial. But basically, we're, we've covered the primary elements in, in here of, you know, your, your column selectors, your sorting of your grids with the arrows. Let me... Let me delete this and reset and hit apply. Bring back my, my whole inventory. Your group by in terms of grouping um, and it provides counts for you. Your uh, dual function bar here, which is a click in search with regex or filter. And, and you can filter with a lot of various criteria that, that is available to you, including filtering or searching into the config file using the latest snapshot. The last thing I just want to touch on here is, again, the action bars across here. And what you see here is A is for action and V is for view. And the actions you can take, again, are going to be context sensitive to what app you're in. So I am in device manager. So I can discover, I can update my support data here. This is the, the Cisco API integration. I can add devices. I can do a multi-edit. So multi-edit is quite useful. Let's say uh, you have configured proxies on these devices, which I, I happen to have, and let me, let me just organize them by router here. So let's just say my proxy information was changing <clears throat> on these Cisco devices, just this subset. I could highlight these, these Cisco devices, and I got a Juniper in there, let me unselect that guy. So I could highlight these guys, and I could come over here and I can hit the multi-edit. Multi-edit is going to show me the common fields that I could edit. And I could change all the, let's say, I, you know, the, I was maintaining the passwords here. I could change the password. I could change the proxy. So this is a multi-edit instead of editing one by one or, or having to export and then re-import to, to update data. So that that's multi-edit. You have the ability to clone here. So let's say... I added a device manually and I wanted to add another device that was very, very similar. I could just clone it and then just manipulate what's different, like maybe the IP address and, and hit discover and have the new device. So that's clone. This next icon is the ad hoc query. We're going to do a detailed jump into that in the next video. So if you stay tuned, you'll do that. This icon here enables you to reboot a device if you have permissions to do that. Uh, so, you know, it just happens to be one of the things you have to do in operations a lot of times to get a device back to a good state or maybe you're having a challenge with it is to go ahead and reboot. Next here is uh, discovery, which is uh, covered in another video. And then this is the import devices. And next, probably pretty important too, is export. So 
if you want to take the data out of Glueware directly here, and again, we have another data export utility, but one of the mechanisms in the majority of the grids that you'll see is you can export directly here and just dump this information out to a CSV file. So with that, that can, this concludes the tutorial on Device Explorer. Just understand it's you know, an important component to understand and work with as a fundamental piece of the Glueware application suite, being that it's used in Device Manager, Config Drift and Audit, and OS Manager, and, and the device view or grid in Config Modeling is also very similar. Most of, the, most of the same things apply. So with that, this concludes this demo. Thank you very much.